and time for the market report. Row crops, again, the big movers. That's right, Mike. Uh, livestock's kind of stayed pretty stable, only moving about a cent these past few weeks, so we're going to stay focusing on row crops. But first, the numbers. What did they have to tell us? And then, in our row report, wheat and corn moving the needle. Why? And for how much longer? Market split again last week, livestock trending up ever so slightly, while row crops a mixed bag, so to speak. Let's take a look. Last week's biggest loss, wheat again, this time down 36 cents, quite a drastic fall. It's now back to January prices. Corn also down 25 cents, and that's a bigger story we'll get into in a bit. Last week's biggest gain, cotton, up about 3 cents. Not much of a jump, but that shows some healthy market movement. So, all the gains in wheat prices this year are now gone. That could be temporary. All it takes to spike the price again is more international conflict. However, there are some other factors at play. Market analysts Matt Bennett and Sue Martin say wheat is oversold, which means less demand than supply. And it's possible it could go a little lower. Yeah, you know, the winter wheat crop's probably going to go into dormancy in the worst shape that, uh, that we've maybe ever seen. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a kind of a train wreck as far as that's concerned. There's been a lot of talk about how good the cro wheat crop looks over in the EU. Uh, and, and quite frankly, I think that the wheat market's oversold. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say that I'm wildly bullish because right now, as far as the charts look, I mean, it's like another three-month low here today. Um, a technician's probably going to tell you that there's more room for downside. Me, personally, I feel like it's a bit oversold. It doesn't look like we've hit a bottom yet, but I certainly wouldn't want to be selling here. One thing I will notice or say is that um, today on the KC wheat, on the March contract, reached the trend line from the lows of 2020, August of the week of August 20th of 2020. And so this is a spot where there should be good support. Now, if we violate that trend line, we could fall another 40 cents, but I think we're really pushing the envelope now. Uh, we'll hit some wave fours, not much lower. And so I think, yes, we're very close. I think, let's put it this way, why sell it now when you didn't before? Um, you might be getting yourself, in fact, that'd probably be a good sign it's ready to turn. I'm thinking you do hold on um, at this time. Now, one thing I've heard that India has a very good crop and they're looking at um, pulling their export ban off. And that could be a little bit of a negative that could possibly send us to that full wave four count. Uh, but to be honest, I think that uh, when I look at the market, it just looks to me like we're in the process of putting a huge uh, secondary low in. And, and I think there's better times to come. Or just as the crop goes into dormancy, you've got to look at your competition around the world. That's it. So, corn seems to be the big news row crop wise this week. The reason being the price drop. Matt Bennett and Sue Martin get into the details, but first I need to give you some context. One of the factors affecting prices was a recently released proposal by the EPA concerning renewable fuel standards. The issue is cellulosic biofuel, which is made from the cellulose in grass, algae, wood, and other plants. In comparison to advanced biofuel and renewable fuel, both of which can be made from corn, in short, experts expected the latter two to be higher. The thing that's scary about 23 is that your typical producer is, is probably going to have the most expensive corn crop they've ever seen as far as their inputs are concerned. And so one thing that we've encouraged producers to do, if you are going to step forward and go ahead and book all your inputs, we got to at least do something to put a floor under some of these uh, corn prices. I'm not saying that I'm bearish, it's just that you're very susceptible, uh, even though fundamentally I still like corn, uh, that doesn't mean that the corn market can't move lower. 23 was where I thought we would see nice, nice high prices. Um, because of China remaining at longer in lockdowns, I think that stalled that. I still think it's coming. I think it got stalled. Um, when I look at 23, what's interesting is, is it looks to me like if we have highs, normally a year of a three comes in around July. Um, but I could also see if we were to catch here, turn and close firm at the end of December for corn, I think you'd make a little higher high in January, possibly February, and I think the market would go into a bear trend. I think that uh, 24 and 25 is holding a little better expectation 
for it than what I originally had. And I think that uh, the dollar will see higher highs in 24 to 25, and that's where I think it'll top out. But I think that when I look at corn, I think the uh, EPA, when they came out with their um, uh, RV, uh, RVOs, and, and it was such a disappointment for corn because it basically went to cellulosic. I mean, a chunk of it was, and it was all vented pretty much around electric. And uh, cellulosic took a big chunk in there, and I think that shocked the trade. They weren't looking for that, and I think that's disappointing. But on the same token, we're still going to increase in ethanol. You're going to see um, in 23, we're supposed to be 15 uh, billion gallons. But on the same token, you know, you've got 250 carried over from 2017. And then you have that same amount, 15.25 in 24 and 25. And in the meantime, the White House was under pressure to lower the uh, renewable fuels. I certainly hope that uh, as we move forward, maybe we'll get a little bit better idea that uh, actually uh, cellulosic won't take up quite as much. I mean, I, I agree with what Sue's talking about there. I think a lot of people in the trade were just a little bit disappointed, especially up front. 15 a quarter as far as 24 and 25 don't look terrible to me, and I thought it was fairly good for renewable diesel. But the thing good. about 23 that, that again, scares me, uh, if you did get into a bear trend, is that uh, I really want people to stop and take a look at how much money they're putting on the table because a few things could happen. Not only are you putting a lot of money into the crop, uh, you know, and the producer should be flush with cash, but uh, there's going to be a lot of people still borrowing money money's not going to be cheap. And so the, the, what it costs to borrow that money is going to be another line item uh, for some producers that if they see this market take a turn and they've chosen not to do anything, uh, it, it's a little scary. What I've said is that high prices and high fertilizer prices, so high price of corn, high fertilizer prices, works a heck of a lot better than if you get your wish and fertilizer moves lower. Because if you get your wish and fertilizer moves lower, corn's probably coming down as well. You'll make more money with high corn, higher corn prices and high fertilizer. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Getting into the winter season, market prices almost seem to be in reset mode price-wise. We'll see if that continues.